After you have listened to the introductory set of instructions in this workout, you may wish to skip them in future and jump straight to the first set of exercises. To do so, please advance your audio player approximately 10 minutes 20 seconds into this program. You can also view all descriptions of our workouts by visiting blindalive.com. Eyes Free Fitness, Pilates Mat Level 1 I'm Jennifer Kern, Certified Mat and Equipment Instructor through Pilates Academy International based in New York. Welcome to our introductory to the Pilates Method Mat Work with a focus on breath and alignment. Please consult your physician before beginning any exercise program and always remember to listen to your body as we go through this class. To begin you'll need a mat for cushioning as well as alignment. You'll also need a pillow or a chair to sit on if you find sitting propped up on a pillow with a straight spine aggravates the hip joints or inner thighs. As a reminder, this is our beginning level Pilates mat class. Practice with this routine as much as you'd like. Once you feel comfortable with the alignment and breathing, feel free to progress on to our Pilates level 2 program. All right, let's begin. Come onto your back on the mat. Your knees are bent and your feet are flat on the floor. Your heels are at a comfortable place away from your hips, so I don't want them hugging too close to your sitting bones. I also don't want them so far away from your hips that you can't plant the whole foot on the mat. Somewhere right in the middle is best. Good. So I also want there to be about three inches of space between your legs. So first we'll find this together. Go ahead and squeeze your legs together so your ankles and your knees are touching, inner thighs are touching. Great, so from here you're gonna lift up onto your toes and take the heels out to the side, a pigeon toe position. So toes touching, heels out to the side. Good, your heel here becomes your pivot point. Lift the toes up nice and high, and then drop them down right in line with the heels. So ideally this has created about two to three inches of space and your knees and ankles are right in line with your hips. Again, about two to three inches apart. Perfect. So in Pilates, alignment is essential. So we're gonna take a few minutes to talk about the alignment of your spine and pelvis before we go into the exercises. Starting with your spine. We wanna make sure we're working from a neutral place. The spine has natural curves in it, which gives it almost an S-like shape. So the first natural curve is in your cervical spine or right behind your neck. Go ahead and check it out. Take your hand and just place it right underneath your neck. There should be a little bit of space there for you. The crown of your head is planted and then you feel your shoulder blades on the mat and then a little space under the neck. Perfect. So the second curve is underneath your lumbar spine. So this one's a little harder to check out uh, just with our body shapes in general. You may not feel actual space underneath your lower back here, but you should feel a strong connection with your sacrum bone on the mat, your, the bottom heavy part of your spine, and then your middle back on the mat and then not so much right in the lower back region, so right underneath the rib cage, really between the ribs and the heavy part of your spine, the bottom part of your spine, your sacrum. So that's the spine. Now we'll talk about our pelvic positions. So starting with our neutral pelvis. To find neutral pelvis, we wanna locate our hip bones. So go ahead and take the heel of your hands to the bones that are right below your waistline. They stick out on either side of your hips. Great. From here, take the base of your thumbs to your hip bones and then rest your hands on the lower belly until your middle fingers touch right at the pubic bone. Uh, it's right above the groin area. Perfect. So this is your pelvic triangle you've created here below. I want your fingertips and your hip bones to be in one line. So this pelvic triangle should just be nice and flat. You've almost created like a little table in that pelvic triangle. This is neutral, super important. So from here, let's go to supported pelvis so you can see the difference of why we need to know what our neutral is. So neutral, the pelvis again is just right in line, pubic bone, hip bones are in one line. From here we go into supported. So you're gonna pull your belly button in, that's your first step. Your navel center pulls into your spine then you're tucking the tail so that your lower back presses into the mat and your pubic bone you'll notice will rise. So now the point of your triangle is lifted up just a little bit. If you can picture a triangle in your mind, the flat triangle first and then the point of the triangle just lifts up to about a 45 degree angle, if that, but just a little rise in the top of the pelvis. 
good. So from there, that's supported. Stay there for just a second. Notice your lower back is firmly glued to the mat. Also that your lower belly is pulled in. The two acting in tandem is extremely important. Why? Because that's what's helping us use our lower abdominals to uh, help strengthen and support ourselves. Again, supported pelvis, as opposed to just being unengaged in the lower abdominals. So, supported again, we'll use when our legs are in the air, most likely. Great. Go ahead and find your way back to a neutral position. So just checking in with your neutral, you've got a little space under your low back, a little space under your neck, and your pubic bone and your hip bones are in one platform. That pelvic triangle is flat. Perfect. So now we're going to talk about the breath for just a second. It's again really important in Pilates that we're using our, our lateral breathing. What does that mean? So go ahead and take your hands to the sides of your rib cage and just kind of frame your ribs for now. From here in lateral breathing, instead of taking a big belly breath that you would use in like yoga or if you were about to sing or yell something where the belly expands and then pulls in, we're thinking of sending air on our inhale to the back and the sides of our ribs, expanding sideways on the inhale, and then on the exhale, pulling everything into our midline from the outside in. Good, so let's practice this together. I know it can sound more complicated than it is. From here, your hands are on your ribs. On your inhale, I want you to try to get your hands to separate from one another. Good, reaching air, pulling air into the back and the sides of your lungs. And then exhale, good, you pull the lungs, the rib cage together. Great, try that again. Inhale, expanding. And then exhale, pulling the rib cage together. Really nice. Notice the belly here. Pull the belly button in towards your spine and still breathe with this lateral breath. Inhale, the belly doesn't move. Exhale, we pull the, the rib cage in, belly stays the same. Good, take a couple more here. Nice deep breaths, inhale. And then exhale, pulling the ribs together. Very nice, one more. Inhale, expanding side to side. The shoulders don't get involved, they just stay where they are. Good, and then exhale, pulling the rib cage back into your center. Awesome, make sense? Great. Now we're going to coordinate the two movements together. So you have your neutral pelvis, your supported pelvis. You also know your lateral breath. We're going to do these both together at the same time. So find your neutral again. You should be there already. And then your hands will float right by your side, palms facing the floor. Roll your shoulders down your back. Get your shoulders away from your ears. The neck stays nice and long. Perfect. So from here, inhale, you're inhaling in neutral using that expansive breath. Here we go, inhale. Then on your exhale, pull your belly button in. Start to tilt your pelvis into a supported place. Good, exhaling all that air out, the rib cage pulls into your midline. Good, on the inhale, you move your pelvis back to neutral and expand the ribs. Great, exhale, the belly pulls in, you tuck your tail. The lower abs sink down into your spine. Good, and then inhale right back to neutral. Take a couple more. Exhale, belly pulls in, tuck your tail. Now notice here if you're gripping in your glutes or your tush area, I want your glutes to stay soft as you're pulling your belly in, as you're tilting your pelvis. Good, and then inhale right back to neutral. We're not working with the, the glutes or the hamstrings at all here. It's all about just lower belly flexion, yeah? Here we go, exhale, the belly pulls in, tucking the tail. And inhale, right back into your center. Let's take one more together. Exhale, the belly pulls in, relax your tush. And then inhale, you're right back into your center or your neutral pelvis. Awesome job, guys. So just one note about the breath here. It is what guides you and leads you in all of these exercises. I'll give you the inhale to do a movement, the exhale to do the counter movement. I don't want you to get lost in it. Oftentimes people get frustrated when they're trying to breathe and coordinate movement and they're learning a new thing. Really just breathing is A, the most important. You'll get that coordination, you'll get that alignment. The more you understand A, what I'm saying, the more you practice, the stronger you get, etc. So don't let it frustrate you. It's just, it's not worth it. 
A, what's most important is the engagement in the exercises, making sure you're still keeping a steady breath. And then B, if that means adding in the breath later, the actual inhale and exhale to do the exercise, great. Awesome. So let's begin with our first exercise. Find your way into a neutral place. Hip bones, pubic bone are in one line, a little space under the low back, a little space under the neck. Great, the hands are right by your side, palms facing down. Good, so we're starting with our half curls. This is similar to a crunch. On the inhale, you roll your shoulders down your back and you reach through your fingertips, maybe lifting them about two inches off of the mat. Good, on your exhale, you nod the chin to your chest. There's a little space underneath your chin. Then curl yourself up just till you're rested right underneath the shoulder blades or the bottom part of your ribs. Great, you inhale to stay here for a breath. And then exhale, you lower down, all the way down to the mat till your head is relaxed and your hands are relaxed on the mat. So that was the long way of saying curl your head, neck, and shoulders off of the mat, and then roll back down to the mat. Great, so again, there's a lot of engagement going on here. You're not just lifting up and then placing your head down. You're pulling your belly button in, you're activating your pelvic floor, you're keeping the shoulders away from your ears and really feeling a lot of work in the upper abdominals. The way to do this, sometimes people just say, I don't feel it. Really try to pull the rib cage together. Try to sink your abdominals in towards your spine. Just that pressure, that contraction should really engage something. Maybe it's not a burn, but it, it, it should feel like engagement. Something's going on in your abdominal region. And that's generally true for a lot of these exercises. Maybe it's not that big. I feel the burn. I feel this crazy intense feeling in my muscles, but you are engaging and you're engaging in a really lengthened, healthy way. So from here, let's take a few half curls. With that being said, take your fingertips to reach forward. Inhale, roll the shoulders down your back. Find as much length in the spine as possible. Then exhale, nod the chin to your chest. Curl yourself up just till you're right underneath the scapula, maybe four to five inches off of the mat. You inhale to stay here, keeping the belly button pulled in. And then exhale, lower down to the mat. Awesome, take it again. Inhale, you lengthen. Exhale, nod the chin to your chest, flatten the belly, pull everything into your center and curl up. Inhale to stay, the ribs expand. And then exhale, lower down one vertebra at a time. Great, you've got four more here. Here we go, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, nod the chin to your chest, roll up, flatten the belly, curl it out. Inhale to stay, and then exhale, lower down. Good, here we go, inhale. Exhale, nod the chin, reach through your fingers, curl up. Try to relax the neck here, you're still keeping it in a flexed position, but put that tension in your belly, inhale to stay, and then exhale, lower down, almost there, two more. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, stay, and exhale all the way down to the mat. Good, one more here, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, nod the chin, curl up, carve out the belly, press the belly button into the spine, inhale to stay, and then exhale, lower down. Great job. Alrighty, we're moving on to your mini bridge. So we've flexed the upper spine. Now we're gonna be flexing the lower spine, which will be uh, lifting our hips. You already know the first part of this movement, which is great. It starts with your pelvic tilt. Then we're just lifting the hips off the mat a little bit and then coming back down. I like to do this. This really is a step to get to your full shoulder bridge. I like to start out with the mini bridge to stretch out the lower back to really work on the firing pattern, which is the way that your muscles would engage for second, third, and then we'll get into your full bridge from there. So mini bridge to set up, you should be in the same position with your feet, but I just wanna check in to make sure nothing's moved. Three inches of space between the legs, feet are firmly planted on the floor, not too close to the sitting bones, not too far away from the body. Great. Hands will be by your side here. So first, inhale in your neutral, and then exhale, take that tuck of the tail that you were taking before supported pelvis. The belly button pulls into the spine, your lower back glues to the mat. 
Inhale to stay and then exhale, release back down. Great. So again, the glutes are quiet here. I'm just going into that supported pelvis one more time. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, pull the belly button in, press it into your spine, and then tuck the tail, the lower back presses into the mat. You're curved just at the lower belly, and then release right back down to your neutral. Great, so mini bridge, now we're gonna add the lifting of our hips. This time you will feel your glutes engage, your tush muscles uh, from here. So inhale, lengthen in your neutral. Exhale, pull the belly button in, tuck the tail, squeeze your glutes, start to lift your hips maybe two inches off of the mat. In your body, you still feel a roundness of the lower spine. The belly button is sinking in towards your spine. Inhale to stay and then exhale, you plant the vertebra one at a time back onto the mat sequentially. So you're not just dropping the tail, but you're rolling down through each bone. Good. Inhale again in neutral. Exhale, you start with the tilted supported pelvis. Engage the glutes, lift your hips just two inches off of the mat. Really press into your heels here. Really find this curve of your lower spine. Belly is sunken in, good. And then from there, start to lower down one vertebra at a time back to neutral. One more like this, inhale, neutral. Exhale, pull the lower abs up and in the belly button and tuck the tail, then start to lift your hips just slightly. The glutes are firm. Inhale to stay and then exhale to lower down. Great, so that's your mini bridge. Now we'll go into full shoulder bridge. Full shoulder bridge, you'll be lifting your hips towards the ceiling as much as you can. Still keeping though the bottom of your ribs on the mat. So you'll feel uh, lifted right from about mid back up, but you still feel your rib cage rooted into the floor. So you're not lifting too high, you're not lifting all the way up, darting the heart towards the ceiling. The heart really does stay pulled into the body. That's kind of a, a good way to know if you're going too far or not, is making sure that the heart still feels like it's pulling towards the floor, but then from bottom of your rib cage up is reaching towards the ceiling. Okay, so here we go. You may feel a lot of hamstring here also. Guess what? It's a hamstring and a glute strengthener, and of course, as well as the core strengthener. So if you start to feel the back of your legs, you are right on the money. Here we go. Inhale in your neutral. Exhale, same thing. You tuck your tail, your lower abs engage. From there, your glutes engage. And then from there, start to lift your hips up towards the ceiling. Hold it here for just a second. Make sure you notice again your heart reaching towards the back ribs. The back ribs are firmly planted on the floor. And then try to lengthen through the front of your body. So reaching through the knees. The glutes are really, really working hard here. Inhale to stay. Then exhale, roll down one vertebra at a time. Good, all the way back to your neutral position. Excellent, that's your full shoulder bridge. Here we go again. Inhale, find length in your spine. Exhale, your belly button pulls in. Tuck your tail, glutes engage, start to lift your hips. Inhale to stay, and then exhale to lower down one vertebra at a time. Good, inhale again. Exhale, tuck your tail, engage the abdominals, engage the glutes, lift your hips towards the ceiling. Now notice here what happens a lot of times, our knees like to wing out to the side, so that means that they start to go away from the midline. Just make sure that they're staying right over your ankles. You might feel a little more engagement in the hamstrings. That's okay, that's why we're doing this. Inhale, stay. And then exhale, lower down. So from the bottom of your ribs, all the way down, hip bones hit, and right back to neutral. Good, two more here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, you lift through the lower belly. You squeeze your tush, you lift your hips. Inhale to stay, don't lose any engagement. And then exhale, lower down. And what I mean by don't lose engagement is once your hips are up, really the glutes can just stop working, but that means that you're just kind of sinking in the bones of your lower back and we don't want that, we wanna stay engaged. So one more with that concept in mind. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, tuck your tail, squeeze your glutes, lift your hips towards the ceiling, keep pressing into your feet. Inhale, stay, make sure the knees are right in line with the ankles, and then exhale, lower down one vertebra at a time. Great, that was a lot of work, that was a lot of uh, cues and subtleties, details, so great job. All right, let's take a little stretch here. So go ahead and take your hands wide out to the side, your palms can face up now. You're in a T position with your hands, so fingertips are wide out to the side. 
Good. From here on your inhale, you lengthen through the spine, prepare, then exhale, take your knees over to the right side, both knees. You'll feel a little stretch in your spine here. It's slightly rotated. Good. Just feeling this twist, breathing into your ribs. Nice little stretch. Good. One more inhale here, expanding through the ribs. And then on your exhale, take yourself right back to your neutral place. Back plants on the mat, feet plant onto the mat. Good. Inhale, prepare, lengthening. And then exhale, take your knees to the other side. So over to the left side. Great big inhales, especially into that right rib cage. Good. Hold it for one more big inhale. And then exhale, plant yourself right back onto the mat in your neutral position. Perfect. Hands will come right by your side again, the palms facing down now, right next to your hip bones. Good. So the last uh, exercise on our back, we're doing toe taps today. Toe taps are a fun exercise. They're a lower abdominal strengthener. So know that. That's what we're our intention. That's what we're working. They can be a little confusing at first. So we're going to run through it really slowly. Lots of detailed instructions. And then from there, we'll start to, to go through it a little at a quicker pace with our breath. To set up for toe taps, we want to make sure that we are in a supported pelvis position at first. So inhale in your neutral. Familiar, yeah. Then exhale, pull your belly button in. Press your lower back into the mat. Good. Your lower back stays glued to the mat the entire time through this exercise. So no little popping ups of the lower back. It stays here. And then the belly button stays pressed into your spine this entire time. Again, so belly button into the spine, spine pressing into the mat. We stay like this. Great. Now you're going to take your right leg to a tabletop position. So bring your right leg up. You'll be bent at the knee at a 90 degree angle and the knee is right over your hip bone. So go ahead if you want to feel it, check it out. You want to just make sure that thigh is flat so it's not angled in any way. Knee right above the hip. Maybe go ahead and feel that sensation, that connection. And then your ankle is right in line with your knee here. So if you were to think you're a part of a square, your thigh bone and your shin bone make a 90 degree angle and then I could just draw a line from your heel down to the floor and then from the floor to your glute and there would be a nice little square there perfect so then we lift our left leg into a tabletop it matches there and again the shin bones are nice and parallel to the floor the legs are squeezed together here awesome hands by your side roll the shoulders down your back this is your starting position and last thing you know it check in with the lower back make sure it's still glued to that mat Awesome. From here, you're going to take an inhale to prepare. On the exhale, you start to reach your thigh bones away from your hips. By doing this, your, your toes will naturally aim for the floor, maybe about six to eight inches in front of you. And then take your knees right back up to your tabletop position. So what happens oftentimes here, people like to just straighten their knees or they like to kick forward in front of them. Really, it's a hinge at your hip. So imagine your hip is the hinge of a door. You're just opening a little bit and closing a little bit. The bend in your knees stays the same. Everything stays the same. It's that hinge of the hip that is really going to help you find what this exercise is doing. So as you hinge at your hips, opening and closing, and you can play around with this as I talk, you start to notice the lower abdominals. So keep your spine on the mat. The lower abdominals want to pooch out. They want to do something. Yeah, you want to keep the belly button pulled in and engaged and just allow the legs reaching away from your center. Allow that to create work in the body, again, especially in the lower abdominals. Great. So a long, a long way of saying reaching the legs away from you then pulling them back in. Let's take this exercise together now. Squeeze your legs. Make sure you're in the right alignment. Knees over hips. Ankles in line with knees. Belly pulled into the spine. Spine glued to the mat. Great, here we go. Inhale, we prepare. Exhale, the leg bones reach away from you, hinging at the hips just slightly. And then you pull your legs right back in on the inhale. Good. Exhale, reach the legs away. <sighs> inhale, bring the legs back up. Good. Exhale, reaching the thigh bones away again. And inhale, back up. How do you know if you're going too far? How do you know if you're not going far enough? You know because your lower back can no longer stay firmly rooted on the mat and your belly button cannot stay pulled into your spine. Even if your lower back's on the mat and your belly's pooching out and um, up and in, up towards the ceiling, you're not staying engaged in the way that I want you to. So again, press that belly into the spine. Feel the work there. 
Inhale, prepare. Exhale, reach the legs away as much as you can and then inhale, lift right back up. Great, let's take three more together. Exhale, reach the legs away. The belly pulls in, 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 and then inhale, come back up. Good, two more and reaching away and back up on that inhale. Nice, last one. Exhale, the belly roots in. Good. And inhale, you lift back up. Great, take both legs down to the mat. Awesome job. Okay, so that's enough work on our back. Let's go ahead and flip on over to our stomach. So you'll be on your stomach in the center of your mat. Take your hands right by your shoulders. Good, and then lengthen through your legs. So they're gonna be lengthened on the mat. Tops of the feet are pressing into the mat. Now turn out your legs so they're externally rotated. Your toes reach out to the side. The heels fall in towards the center of your mat. Then open your legs a little wider than sit bones distance apart. So a little bit wider than your hips. Great. So the same engagement applies for the lower abdominals as it did on your back, except now the belly button is reaching away from the mat and you're pressing your hip bones and your pubic bone, the bottom of part of your triangle, pelvic triangle, into the mat. Great. From here, if you've got that going on, the belly button pulled away from the mat, the hip bones and pubic bone pressing into the mat, then you're all good to go. Just stay here, lengthen through the legs, you're fine. Lower body stays like that. Good. We're taking our half swan position here, so it's just a little upper back extension. Hands will be right by your shoulders. You're lengthened through the crown of your head. There's no wrinkles in the back of your neck. Forehead can be rested on the mat or hovering over it if that's not comfortable for you. Great. From here, on the inhale, you slide the shoulder blades down your back so you feel the bottom points of your shoulder blades pulling towards your glutes. Good. Then from there, you're gonna exhale, lift your head, neck, and shoulders just slightly above the mat. They're hovering over the mat maybe three to four inches. You inhale to stay, and then exhale, lower yourself right back down to the mat. Forehead can touch the mat, or again, just stay at a nice hover. Awesome, that's all it is, just a little upper back extension. Let's take it again. Inhale, roll the shoulders down away from your ears. Exhale, start to lift your head, neck, and shoulders up away from the mat. Check in here. You can take a breath in. Make sure that the neck hasn't, um, there's no wrinkles in the back of it. It's nice and elongated. You're thinking of reaching through the crown of your head. Good, and then lower down. So you should feel engagement again around the shoulder blades to secure the shoulders down on the back and then keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Then you'll also feel some engagement around the upper spine area. Let's try it again. Inhale, roll the shoulders down your back, lengthen through the back of your neck and start to lift up, up, up. Good, again, no wrinkles in the back of the neck. Inhale to stay and then exhale to lower down. Good, just a few more here. Recheck in with your belly button. It's pulled away from the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, roll the shoulders down your back and lift. The heart lifts maybe a half an inch away from the mat, maybe even more depending on your Flexibility in your back, inhale to stay, and then exhale to lower down. Good, important to think more length than lift. It's not about how high you get up, it's about how uh, lengthened you can be in this position, how engaged long you can be, good. Inhale again, exhale, start to lift. You stay, and then lower down. Good, one more here, inhale. Thinking length of the spine, exhale, keep that length as you lift up. Inhale to stay, and then exhale, lower down. Perfect, so press into your mat with your hands. You'll come into a child's pose here, or a shell pose, it's been called both. You take your seat to your heels. Hands are reached out in front of you. Forehead can stay on the mat here. Just opening up the lower back, it's a nice little stretch. If you have that pillow or blanket nearby, you can stick it underneath your tush if your tush doesn't reach your heels. That's totally fine. It's a great modification for this. And we'll just take a few deep breaths here. So inhale, that big expansive inhale. And then exhale, let all the air out. Pull the belly button in, connect the ribs. Good, two more. Great big inhale, stretching. And exhale. Final one, great big inhale. Good, and exhale all the air out. Very nice. So we're gonna make our way onto all fours. 
You'll take your shoulders right over your wrists and your knees right underneath your hips. All right, so as we're setting up in all fours, I just wanna offer this modification to you if you find that your wrists don't like these weight-bearing exercises. Go ahead and fold up the top of your mat. So you're gonna do a couple rolls with the top of your mat in towards the middle. Good, and then you take the heel of your hand to the rolled up part of your mat and then your fingertips rest on the floor. So what this does for you is it just increases the angle at your wrist. So it's not at a complete 90 degree angle like it would be if it was just flat on the floor, but you've created just an increase in that angle at the wrist joint and you're not sinking into those bones so much in the wrist. That elevation just gives you a little more space in the joint. Awesome, so again, you wanna make sure the shoulders are right over the wrists and the knees are right under the hips. Even if you have your hands on your mat, same thing, shoulders right over wrists. Good, from here, I want you to find the length of your spine. So in your mind, you're thinking of tailbone reaching towards the wall behind you, crown of the head reaching towards the wall in front of you. Your spine has made a tabletop position, so there should be no arches, no curves, just a nice neutral spine. No wrinkles in the back of your neck. Also make sure that your head isn't tilted downward like a nod. The crown of the head is right in line with the neck, right in line with the mid spine. Great. Last thing here, roll the shoulder blades down your back. Try to feel that engagement of the scapula pulling down towards the glutes, the scapula of your shoulder blades, so you feel a little engagement here in the shoulders. Keep them there. I don't want you to wear your shoulders as earrings. I want you to keep them pulled down away from the ears, the neck nice and long. Great. So we're going into watchdog. This is an excellent core exercise, a balance exercise. It strengthens the shoulder girdle. It's just an all around really nice exercise. So to prepare, the inhale, you just think length in your spine, rolling the shoulders down away from the ears. Then on your exhale, you're reaching your right hand forward in front of you and your left leg back behind you. The left foot can be flexed here and the right hand palm can be facing down towards the floor. Ideally, you're in one long line from fingertips all the way through your toes. Good, you inhale to stay, and then exhale to take your leg and arm back down. Good, other side. Inhale, roll the shoulders down away from the ears. Notice the belly button. Exhale, pull the belly button in more. Reach your left arm forward in front of you, palm faces down, and the right leg lifts behind you. Good, inhale to stay, find length and then exhale to lower down. Good, so what do you need to feel here? A lot of times people start to wibble wobble, they feel this kind of tipping uh, motion either to the, uh, to the hand side, to the foot side. You really wanna find your waistline. Your obliques are working here when you're doing these unilateral movements. So the obliques are right around your waistline, they're in your belly. You wanna feel them pull in nice and tight. So waistline pulls in nice and tight here, the core stays strong and active. Good, last note is ideally, you're reaching the arm and leg away at the same time. That's just that added bonus. If you're not comfortable with that, no worries. Take one arm and then the leg, hold. But uh, if you're feeling up for that challenge, try to reach the arm and leg at the same time, opposite arm, opposite leg, away from the center at the same time. Great, let's try it out. Here we go. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, nice and neutral, shoulders roll down your back. Exhale, right hand forward, left leg back behind you in space. Good, holding it here, we'll take an inhale. Don't bring them down yet, exhale, keeping the arm and leg up. Good, inhale again, and exhale, one more. Inhale to lengthen, and then exhale, take the arm and leg back down to your all fours position. Great job, that was a nice hold. Here we go, other side, left side. Inhale, the shoulders roll down your back. Exhale, reach your left hand forward and your right leg back behind you. Good, inhale, you stay for a breath, lengthening through the limbs. Exhale, you pull your waistline in, the belly stays nice and tight. Two more deep breaths. Inhale, lengthen, core is on, nice and strong. Exhale, release, good, one more. Inhale, then exhale, take your left hand down and your right leg right underneath your right hips. Good, one more time each side. Here we go, inhale, roll the shoulders down your back. Exhale, the right hand reaches forward, the left leg reaches behind you in space. Inhale, and exhale, good, two more breaths. Inhale, expanding the ribs, keeping the belly pulled in. Exhale, good, last one, inhale, reach. 
and then exhale, drop the right hand, drop the left leg. Good, last time, left side. Inhale, roll the shoulders down your back. Exhale, pull the belly button in and reach the left arm and the right leg away. Inhale, think length. Exhale, contract the belly in, in, in. Good, inhale, expand. Exhale, hip and ribs slide together, rib cage pulls together. Good, last one, inhale. And then exhale, drop the left hand, drop the right leg. Good job, guys. Great ab work. So before you sit back, I want you to stay in this all fours position. Awesome. And then tuck your feet underneath yourself so the balls of your feet are pressing into the mat. If you're unfamiliar with the balls of your feet, it's that place right underneath where the toe connects to the foot. Good. Your wrists are still right underneath, underneath your shoulders and your knees are still right underneath your hips. We're going into knee floats. So from here, you're gonna take an inhale, connecting the shoulder blades down your back. Good, lengthening through the spine. Then on your exhale, your belly button pulls into your spine. You lift your knees to a slight hover over the mat. So it's about two inches away from the mat that your knees lift. Great, you inhale to stay here and then exhale, drop your knees back down to the floor. Perfect, that's the exercise. Let's take it again. Inhale, roll the shoulders down away from your ears. Exhale, the belly button pulls in and you lift your knees up just slightly. Great, inhale to stay. And then exhale to lower down. Awesome. So if that's challenging, go ahead and stay there just for that length of time. One breath up, one breath down. But I'm gonna take you a step further today. We're gonna be holding our knees up in space for five counts, yeah? Again, if at any time you need to lower, if you're finding discomfort in the wrists, Totally fine, but try to stay with the count. See if you can challenge yourself a little bit today. So here we go. Inhale, roll the shoulders down your back. You feel that connection with the scapula onto the back of the rib cage. Good, exhale, lift your knees up just slightly. Hold it here, find your natural breath. We hold here for five, for four, three, two. Good, and then drop your knees down on one. Awesome job. Here we go again. Inhale, roll the shoulders down your back, lengthen through your spine. Tuck your toes, the knees lift slightly. Here we go. And you lift and hold. You hold for five, good. The belly stays pulled in, four. The waistline is pulled in, three. You hold it there for two. And then you can drop your knees down on one, good. We've got two more here, here we go. Inhale, roll the shoulders, connect with the shoulder girdle. Exhale, you lift your knees, belly button pulls in. And you hold it for five, four, three. Yes, I'm counting slower. Two, and last one. Good, drop the knees down. And this is your final one. Here you go, inhale, exhale, lift and hold. Big deep breaths. The belly stays pulled in. Good. Last two counts and one, drop your knees down. Great job. Go ahead and send your tush back to your heels and sit into a child's pose again for just a second. Roll out the wrists if you need to. And then when you're ready, we're taking one more stretch in this all fours position and it's your cat and cow stretch. So same thing, you're back up onto all fours. Shoulders are right over your wrists. Your knees are right underneath your hips. You're in a neutral spine to start out with. Great, so take an inhale. You find a length in the spine here. Then on your exhale, pull your belly button in and start to round your back up towards the ceiling. Also notice your belly pulling into your spine. You're trying to hollow out the abdominal cavity here and it's just a nice big stretch and a flexion position of your spine. Good, and then from there on the inhale, you're gonna drop your belly towards the floor, roll the shoulders down your back, reach your heart forward. Great, this is your cow position. Inhale here, exhale, pull the belly button in, reach your spine to the ceiling. Inhale, expand the ribs, fill up the belly, open the chest. Good, here we go again, exhale, pull the belly button in and round. And inhale, open, moving the heart forward, reaching long through the neck. Last one, exhale, pull the belly button in, curl. And inhale, arch and open. Lovely job. All right, we're going into side body work. So we're gonna use our mat to help us find our alignment here. You're gonna take yourself onto the right side of your body. 
good. So then the right side of your body is gonna line up with the right side of your mat so that we are finding one long line with the body. So taking yourself onto your right side, your legs are stacked one on top of the other. You're rested on your right thigh, your right hip, right side. Good. And then your right hand is going to come into a pillow position for your head. So you can either have it extended overhead and then your head is resting on your bicep, or you can bend at the elbow and have your head resting into your hand, whichever position is more comfortable for you. But you're right at the edge of the right side of your mat. And then just go on down the line, make sure your shoulder, your hips, your knees, and then your ankles are also in line with the outside of the right side of your mat. Great, so you're in one long line on your right side. Your head is nice and supported. You're gonna stay relaxed in the head, neck, and shoulders. So oftentimes we love to hold tension in, the, in our neck and keeping our shoulders by our ears. It's just like a, a reflex of tension. So roll the shoulders down your back, relax your head, and just let that be. Great, so we're doing side body work. You have your legs stacked one on top of the other. Go ahead and check in with your left hip. Make sure that your left hip is right on top of your right hip. So you're not leaning forward at all in the left side, but you're just in one long line, almost like you're sandwiched between two walls. I don't want you to be flexed or forward in any position. You're just in one long line. Awesome. Last thing, your left hand is gonna be on the mat right in front of your chest, right in front of your heart. That's just acting as a stabilizer for you in this sideline position. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get started with the exercises. You are going to take your left leg now, point through the toes of both your right foot and your left foot. Great, now take your left leg and lift it up just a few inches above your right leg so it's right in line with your left hip. You should maybe find about three to four inches of space between the legs here. Good, and you're kind of like at a narrow scissor with the legs, right? Last thing before we start our movement with our left leg, I just want you to check in with your, your center again. Make sure your waistline is pulling in 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 so the right side is almost reaching away from the mat you're not just collapsed onto the mat but you're still really engaged just like you were in your back body work and your front body work you feel your waistline is in nice and tight your core is on it's ready to stabilize you here good so now with your left leg it's hovered in space right now you're just going to take little circles of your leg here so you're making circles that are maybe the size of a of a tea saucer a teacup saucer and then they're just small little circles. The circle comes from the top of your hip, not from the ankle. We're not doing ankle rolls, we're doing circles with the leg. Good, and so as you're circling your leg, what is this doing? Why are we circling our leg in space? Well, we're learning how to stabilize ourselves against the movement of the leg. We're also learning how not to hike our hip up into our rib cage, but how to keep stable in our center, in our core, and just move the leg bone in space, yeah? So notice that, make sure that your hip hasn't lifted up as you lifted your leg, but it's still stacked right on top of the, the right hip. Good, so continue on the circle. Notice your belly pull in, up and in. The lower abs are engaged, the waistline is engaged. Good, a couple more circles here. Great, go ahead and reverse the circle now. So it's the same thing. We're just moving the circle backwards in space. And if you feel your body rocking right and left and you're having trouble stabilizing on your right side, you gotta pull that core in just a little bit more. You gotta really feel nice and tight and strong, stabilized in your center. Good, tiny little circles here. Really good, nice controlled movements. And you'll circle the last four, three, two, good. Keep that left leg up in space so it's still about three to four inches away from your right leg. You're in that narrow scissored position again. Good, pointing through the toes. Awesome, so I want you to keep that leg up in space. Hopefully we'll stay engaged in that, the outside of your left hip too and you're getting some work there. Great, moving on. So now we're gonna take our inner thighs to squeeze together, a little inner thigh lift. So left leg is gonna stay up in space and pointed. Good. From there, you can press into your left hand. On your exhale, you're gonna squeeze your right leg up to your left leg, squeezing the thighs together. Good, inhale to stay. Exhale, drop your right leg down. So now the left leg is fixed in space and the right leg is doing the work, good. Take an inhale here to prepare. Exhale, squeeze your inner thighs together. Squeeze your ankles together, your knees together. Inhale, stay good. Exhale, drop the right leg back down to the floor. Awesome, pull your waistline in more. Pull your center in more. Inhale, you lengthen. Exhale, squeeze your right leg up to meet the left. Inhale, stay. Then exhale, bring the right leg down. 
Good, this should be challenging. Uh, check in with your hip points just for a second. Make sure they're face the wall in front of you. You're staying nice and parallel in the hip joint. Good, we have three more here, right back to where you were. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the right leg to meet the left leg. Inhale to stay, exhale, drop the right leg down. Nice, two more, here you go, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze the inner thighs, squeeze the ankle, squeeze the knees, inhale, stay. And exhale, lower down, good, last one. Inhale, exhale, squeeze, bring the right leg up to the left leg. And then lower the right leg down. Good, from here, lower the left leg down. Both legs are squeezed together now. Engage in your waistline, engage in your core. Good, so now we're taking both legs to lift, side leg lift here. Here you go, inhale, lengthen the legs. Exhale, keep the legs squeezed. You're lifting both legs up. They're probably gonna only come up about three inches. Inhale to stay and exhale down. For some people, three inches might actually be a lot. So for this one, it definitely depends on body and flexibility and a number of different things, strength level, what I want you to feel in your body, engagement in the inner thighs, engagement in the core. Even if you're not lifting your legs, actively squeeze them together, actively think of lifting both of them at the same time. This isn't easy necessarily. And then try if this is easy for you to take your left hand. So maybe you're just resting on your fingertips instead of on your full hand and or take the left hand to your thigh. If this is just a piece of cake, do that. Challenge your stability. So find what works for you. Okay, here we go again. Squeeze your legs together. Inhale, exhale, lift both legs away from the floor. Inhale to stay, exhale, drop both legs down. Good job, we've got four more here. Inhale, point through the toes, lengthen one long line in the body. Exhale, the core engages, you lift both legs up, keep the inner thigh squeezing, the ankle squeezing, and lower down. Here we go, inhale, exhale, squeeze and lift, that's it, belly button in, you've got it. And exhale down, one more, inhale, lengthen, Exhale, squeeze the legs, lift them up as much as you can. And then you lower down. Great job. Good, good, good. Go ahead and find yourself. Uh, you can roll onto your stomach. And then we'll take the same thing on the other side. So onto the left side of our mat we go. We're lining up again with the outer edge of the, the left side of your mat. You're in a long line from shoulders to hips to knees to ankles. And then your hand again, you can either have your head resting in your hand, your elbow is bent forward, or you can have your arm completely extended and then you're resting on top of your shoulder on top of your bicep. Good. And then check in, make sure that your hips are stacked one on top of the other. Uh-huh. Great. And then you take your right hand in front of your heart. Perfect. We're doing the same series on this side. So from here, point through both toes. Pull your waistline in, pull your lower belly up and in. You're still nice and neutral in the spine, even though we're on our left side now. Take an inhale, and then exhale, lift your right leg up just a few inches so it's in line with your right hip. So about three inches distance between the legs. Good, from here you stabilize in your core, you pull your center in nice and tight, and then you just start to make circles with the right leg. Again, the circle comes from the top of the hip, not from the ankle. So the whole leg bone is making these circles. Good, pointing through the toes. And then maybe as you're doing this, since we've already done it on the other side, your core is, is remembering how to do this, you know what to do. Maybe you again, tent your finger so that you're not resting so much on that, the right hand, that you have to find the stability in, in your core, in your center to keep you nice and stacked in the, the left side on your left side, good. Keep circling, you've got four more here. And three, your breath is nice and natural for two. And one, good, we'll go ahead and reverse the circle. So now it's starting to the back or whichever way that you, the reverse of whatever you were doing, good. Little circles here. So again, no wobbling on that left side. You are nice and strong and centered. Your whole body isn't moving aside from the circles in your, of your right leg. Good, a few more here. Challenging your stability with that right hand. Excellent, we'll take four more. We'll circle for four. And three, two. Good, keep that right leg lifted in space now. Perfect, you're about three inches away from the left leg. Both toes are pointed. Get really strong, feel that the abdominals engage. Feel your waistline pull in. You take an inhale to prepare. 
On the exhale, you bring your left leg up to meet your right leg. You squeeze the legs together. Inhale to stay here, and then exhale lower down. Good, find length in your waistline. You're pulling your waistline, yes, in towards the center, but you're not collapsing, bringing the hip closer to the rib. The hip stays exactly the same, good. Inhale, reach through your right legs. Exhale, squeeze your left leg to meet it. Inhale, stay the inner thighs, connect the knees, the ankles. Exhale, drop that left leg back down. Good, four more. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, squeeze and lift. Inhale to stay and squeeze more. And then drop the left leg down. Great, inhale, point through the toes. Exhale, squeeze the legs together. Keep them squeezed, inhale, stay. And exhale, drop down. Last two. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze the legs together. The lower belly is still active. The waistline is still pulled in. The inner thighs are squeezing. Inhale, stay. Exhale, drop the left leg down. Great job, last one. Here we go, inhale. Exhale, squeeze the legs together. Lengthen through the toes, lengthen through the waistline. And then exhale, drop the bottom leg down. And then drop your right leg down. Awesome job. Cool, so now we have the lift of both legs together. We talked about it on the other side, but just as a reminder, you can either have your full hand planted down if you're finding that this sideline work is challenging, which it absolutely can be, or you can take your fingers to tent onto the floor, so just fingertips touching is just a little in case, a little, hmm, maybe I still want a little stability with my hand. If you're feeling great, take your right hand on top of your right thigh. Okay, here we go. Squeeze both legs together. Pull your lower belly, your belly button up and in towards your center line. Your waistline is reaching in towards your spine, so it's nice and, and engaged. Here you go. Inhale, get long in your body. Exhale, lift both legs up away from the mat. Keep your legs squeezed together for the inhale. Then exhale, drop them down. Good job. Inhale again, find length. Exhale, lift the legs up, keeping the legs squeezed together. Inhale, stay. And then exhale, lower down. Very nice. Inhale again. Exhale, squeeze, engage, and lift. Inhale, stay. And exhale down. Maybe to inhale to stay is too hard and you just drop the legs down. Totally fine. You've got three more here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze the legs. Lift both of them up. Inhale to stay. And then exhale down. Good. Two more. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze, and lift. You stay for a second, pointing through the toes, and then exhale down. Final one. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze the legs, lift. Inhale, you stay. The belly button's pulled in. The waistline is pulled in. Inhale to stay. And then exhale, drop both legs down. Awesome, awesome job. Good. So you can come back onto your knees. Find your child's pose. Uh, perhaps just relax for a second. That's some excellent, intense side work. Then from here, I'm going to ask that you find that prop either your pillow or a chair that may be nearby. And then we're gonna do some seated work to finish up. So go ahead and grab that prop and I will meet you back here. Alrighty, so you've found your way to your seat. You're either in a chair or you're on the floor or your hips are elevated on the floor with a pillow or a few blankets. Either way, if you're on your chair, your feet are gonna be about sit bones distance apart. Your feet are firmly rooted into the floor and you're seated nice and tall, nice straight neutral spine. Good, for those of you on the floor, your feet are gonna be about sit bones distance apart, maybe a little bit wider. And if you need to, you can go ahead and take a slight bend of your knee and then press your heels into the floor. This is giving you a little leverage so that as your heels press into the floor, you can really root into your sitting bones and then sit up nice and tall. If you've got extremely flexible hamstrings and lower back, which I have to say, most of us do not, and that's totally fine. But if you do, if you find yourself one of those lucky people, go ahead and just extend your legs forward right in front of you, a nice straight leg slightly uh, wider than sit bones distance apart and you're seated nice and tall here. I'd like to make the note before we go into the exercises. I love doing this one from a chair. It's great spinal stretching. That's really what we're doing. We're doing a lot of spinal stretching. We're going forward and back, twisting a little bit with the spine and then combining the movements together. These exercises are great to do right out of bed or after you've been sitting for a long period of time. It just opens up the spine. It, it allows it to move in all the directions that it wants to, needs to, and really should move in a day. So, anywho, 
Go ahead, find your tall seated position, whatever that means for you, whatever prop that means for you. You are nice and tall, rooted in your seat, and then lifted nice and tall in the spine, neutral spine. Perfect. From here, your fingertips are going to find your thighs. Great. On your inhale, you lift nice and tall, so you're finding as much length throughout your spine as you can. On the exhale, you're going to nod your chin to your chest, just like you did in the beginning of class. There's a slight space between chin and your actual chest. From here, you start to pull your belly button in, and you're rounding your spine one vertebra at a time. Your fingertips will trace along your thighs towards your feet. You're coming into a completely rounded position of the spine. Awesome. So from here, your goal is not a hamstring stretch. I'm not asking you to flatten yourself onto your legs. I'm actually asking you to find a really deep C curve of the spine, a really nice hollowed out position of the back of the abdominal cavity. You're really rounded in the spine. You take an inhale, expanding in the rib cage, and then exhale. You're going to lift yourself up one vertebra at a time, growing tall, firmly rooted in the sitting bones. Great, let's take it again. This is fine, stretch forward. Inhale, sit tall, grow out of your roots, and then exhale, nod the chin to your chest. Reach forward with the fingertips and then round yourself. Good, so again, the spine is as curved as possible. You have as much space between each vertebra as you can. You inhale to stay and expand, and then exhale, you sit up nice and tall. Good, you've got two more here. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, nod the chin to your chest. Start to trace your fingertips along your legs, round the spine, the belly is pulled up and in. Inhale to stay and then exhale, roll yourself up one vertebra at a time. Last one, inhale, sit tall. Exhale, nod the chin, pull your belly in and then round forward, fingertips reach towards the feet. Inhale to stay. And then exhale to lift up one vertebra at a time. Really nice. Again, that was spine stretch forward. From here, we're going into our spine twist. Again, you're rooted in your sitting bones. Your heels are pressing into the floor or your legs are nice and straight on the floor. From here, your arms come out to the side. So they're in a T position, the palms face down. Go ahead and roll the shoulders down your back. Lose any tension you may have in your neck. Seated as tall as you can here. Good. We'll take this one as a practice round at first because there's a few steps to it. Uh, we're taking a little staccato breath with our inhale, so little short breaths here. We're going to take three of them. So we inhale through our nose three times and then exhale through our mouth. Got it? So the choreography to that breath would be on the inhale through your nose, you're twisting to the right side. You twist, inhale. You twist a little more to the right, inhale. You twist a little more to the right, inhale. And then on the exhale, you come right back into your center, right to where you're starting. Good, we take it to the left. Now you inhale through your nose, little breath. Inhale, twist a little bit more to the left. Inhale a little bit more to the left. And then exhale right back into your center. Great, so that was our dress rehearsal. Now we'll go through it again. Arms are reached out to the side, the palms face down. Roll the shoulders down your back. Great, here we go. We inhale to the right. You grow taller and inhale to the right more. You twist a little bit more to the right, inhale. And then exhale, you twist right back into center or untwist to center, good. Here you go to the left. You inhale, twist to the left. Inhale, twist a little bit more. Inhale, twist a little bit more, and then exhale, you return right back to center. Good. Now each time you're twisting, I want you to think of growing taller. So instead of twisting and collapsing, I want you to think of twisting and growing, twisting and growing. Perfect, here we go again. You inhale to the right and twist. Inhale, twist, get taller. Inhale, twist, tallest. Exhale back to center. Roll the shoulders down your back. Make sure it's not your shoulders elevating, but it's lengthening in your spine. Here we go to the left. You inhale, twist. Inhale, twist more. Inhale, twist more. And then exhale back into the center. Good. We've got two more each side. Inhale, twist right. Inhale, twist right more. Inhale, twist right more. The waistline is pulled in. And then exhale back into center. Good. To the left. You inhale, twist and grow. Inhale, twist. The belly pulls in more. Inhale, twist, and yes, good, and then exhale right back into center. Nice, one more time each side. Inhale, twist to the right. Inhale, twist to the right, roll the shoulders down. Inhale, twist to the right and grow. And exhale right back to center. Arms are still strong out to the side. One more time to the left. 
Inhale, twist to the left. Inhale, twist more. Inhale, twist, grow tall, roll the shoulders down, and then exhale right back into center. Drop your hands. Good job. So that was your spine twist. Now you have your final uh, stretch of the day. It's called saw. Saw is brilliant. It combines your flexion and your rotation into one movement or into one exercise. So you're getting all different movements of the spine here. And it really is a combination of what we just did. So it should seem kind of familiar. From here, your feet are again a little wider than sit bones distance apart. If you're in that chair, you can go ahead and just widen your uh, stance out just an ooch. Great. Your hands reach out to the side, the palms face down. Saw happens in four movements. So four breaths to this exercise, one movement per breath. Great, we'll take it really slow at first. This is our dress rehearsal. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense at the moment. Just keep following the cues, keep following along, we'll get it. So from here, we're gonna inhale and twist all the way to the right. Good, on the exhale, your palm is gonna face, your left palm will face forward, your right palm will face back in space. So there's an internal rotation of that right arm. Good, from here on the exhale, you pull your belly button in, your left pinky finger meets your left pinky toe. Great, make sure your spine is rounded here and the belly is pulled in. Awesome. On your inhale, you sit right back up in your twist to the right. Good, so now your spine is twisted to the right, but you're also right up and down, shoulders over hips. And then on your exhale, you come right back into your neutral position. Good, so four breaths, four movements. Here we go to the left, let's try it out this way. Inhale, twist to the left, the arms are to the side, good. Then on your exhale, the left palm faces back, the right palm faces forward. You flex in your spine, pulling the belly button in and take your right pinky finger to right pinky toe. Nice. From here, you inhale, you sit back up, both palms will face forward, and then exhale, untwist back into center. Great, so I know there's that arm action going on, the flip of the wrist that makes it a little uh, challenging. Just know that after you've twisted, whatever hand is backwards will internally rotate so the thumb will face down, thumb side faces down. Good, and that is really just a detail to the exercise. What's most important, at least from my point of view, is what's going on in your spine during this. So if that hand flip is just not making sense to you, continue on with the exercise and you'll be just fine. So here we go, this is it. Take your hands wide out to the side, sit as tall as you can. Great. Take an inhale, spin to the right, twist to the right. On your exhale, your left pinky finger meets your left pinky toe. Your right hand internally rotates, thumb facing down. Inhale, you lift back up to sit in your twist. And then exhale, you come back into your center. Good, so starting position. From here, take it to the left. You inhale to twist to the left. Exhale, you take your right pinky finger to your left pinky toe. Your left hand rotates inward, thumb facing down. Inhale, you sit up nice and tall. The hands go back to where they were. You're seated in a twist now. And then on the exhale, you come right back into your starting position into center. Great, here we go again. Inhale, twist to the right, grow tall. Exhale, curl over. Left pinky finger, right pinky toe. Inhale to lift up nice and tall. Exhale, back into the center. Good, to the left, here we go. Inhale, sit up, twist to the left. Exhale, curl forward. Right pinky finger, left pinky toe, belly pulled in. Inhale, you sit up, still twisted to the left. And then exhale, back into the center. Let's take one more round either side. Inhale, twist, twist to the right, lift up tall. Exhale, pull the belly button in, round over. Left pinky finger, right pinky toe. Right thumb faces down towards the floor, good. Inhale, sit up. You're still in your twist. And then exhale, back into center. Final one, here we go. Inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, pull the belly button in, meet your right pinky finger to your left pinky toe. Left palm faces down, thumb towards the floor, good. Inhale, you lift up in your twist to the left. And then exhale, you unwind right back into the center. Awesome job.
So go ahead and take your hands to your thighs, sit up nice and tall, and I just want you at the end of your practice to acknowledge yourself and the work that you put in today. You've made a commitment to fitness and that is just absolutely beautiful. We're so thankful to have you here for our Pilates Mat Level 1 class at Ice Free Fitness and we hope to see you again really soon. Great job, everybody.